Okay, so this is the second in my series of moral alignment rankings. If you're not familiar, the Dungeons & Dragons moral alignment chart is a system that assigns characters a level of morality that ranges from lawful good to chaotic evil. So I'm going to be going game by game in the Twisted Metal series with a single chart per game to decide which characters best embody each spot on the list in that game. This might be a bit tough for a series that doesn't focus on story like Twisted Metal, but I'll do my best. I'm not going to be ranking every character's morality, simply the ones who best embody each spot game to game. My one condition is I'm only assigning it to playable characters, otherwise Calypso would hog the chaotic evil spot. Although I will make an exception for Twisted Metal 2012. Also, fair warning, not every game has characters that are slam dunk identifiable with particular spots. In particular, not every game has a set of truly evil characters, so I'm gonna have to stretch credulity with this a bit. So with that said, let's get started with... Oh yes, the original game in the series, and this one's already a bit of a thorn in my side because you have an abundance of people on one side of the spectrum and not a whole lot on the other, so some of these selections will probably make some people raise an eyebrow or two. First up we have... Of course, Outlaw, Carl Roberts, is gonna be the de facto lawful good considering he's a good cop and is trying to shut down the tournament for people's safety. Can't get much more lawful good than that. Shame he got screwed over, but never mind. But, do you want to know what I think is really lawful good? Today's sponsor, Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome top shelf goods from under the radar brands. In fact, 90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are based in the US. When you sign up, they'll have you fill out a preference quiz, and based on those results, every month they'll send you a box of new products. They've got awesome clothes, cool stuff for your house, camping, and cooking gear. Basically, just high quality stuff in every category. They'll even let you preview your box to pick and choose your items. Decide if you want to keep it, swap out products, or skip the month entirely for no charge. You only pay for what you want. The wide range of boxes includes the Weekender box, where you get a high quality durable canvas bag, the type that stone masons used to use. Or if you feel like spicing up your life, you could get the Scorch Box, which provides you with hot sauces ranging from Pineapple Habanero to the Oakland, to Zab's Original, to Groovy Green, to Roasted Garlic, to Scorch Bonnet Hot Sauce. The choices are numerous. They offer a new membership program where you can get really great deals all year round. I'm talking like 30% off and sometimes more, and it's totally free to join. If you sign up today and use the code TBPGIFT at the checkout, or follow the link bespokepost.com slash TBPGIFT, all lowercase, you get a free mystery gift with your first membership purchase. And if you're not convinced, you can sign up for free, skip a month, or cancel at any time, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Sign up today. I'm Philip Coulson, and I approve this message. Once again, thank you to Bespoke Post for sponsoring today's video. Thumper, aka Bruce, is a good man. Living in the LA projects, he's seen his fair share of gang violence, and all he wants is for that violence to end, so he's pretty noble. Matter of fact, the only reason he's not lawful good is that Outlaw has the benefit of being a cop. But Thumper still ranks as neutral good, and in any other situation would have been lawful good. Crimson Fury's Agent Stone is a secret agent determined to get a black box that proves the existence of aliens so he can reveal it to the world. Being a secret agent, he's probably no stranger to making tough choices, and revealing the existence of aliens to the world because they deserve to know is certainly noble in theory, but he's essentially inciting potential mass panic all because people deserve to know. Sometimes, ignorance is bliss. So despite having the best intentions and clearly having the backstory of a noble person, he's knowingly causing a potential uprooting of the worldwide status quo, which is pretty chaotic to me. Meanwhile, the driver of Warthog, Commander Mason, wants the exact same black box because he's been tasked by the American government to retrieve it so that it won't get out. So by following the commands of the American government, he's definitely a lawful character, but by simply doing what he's told and not having any personal stakes in the matter, that categorizes him as neutral. Hammerhead to me best embodies true neutrality in the original Twisted Metal game because, simply put, 
the drivers have no real positive or negative intentions. All they wanted to do was get some new tires for their truck, and otherwise they're just a couple of blank-faced goons, practically too dumb to even realize what they're doing. So that to me says neutrality. Pit Viper's entire role is as a hired assassin to take out Calypso, but not for any righteous reasons, but rather because some people paid her to do it. So ultimately, she does a good deed for somewhat selfish reasons, and will continue to be a freelance assassin taking out whoever for the right price. The concept of being an assassin is inherently amoral because you have the potential to kill good people or bad people depending on who hires you. And being a hired killer is also inherently a very chaotic thing because, I mean, nobody wants to die. So based on those factors, she's a chaotic neutral. This is where I started to stretch things because there really aren't any playable characters in this game that are distinctly evil. So I'm having to stretch credulity with this one quite a bit. So I chose Mr. Grimm, the Grim Reaper, the Reaper of Souls. I guess that's pretty evil in theory because nobody likes to have their soul reaped, especially Calypso, but he's ultimately just following the script, so to speak. Following the natural order of things, making him pretty lawful in a sense, but still evil because, you know, death sucks. Mr. Ash, the driver of Darkseid, is literally Satan, and even though he only entered the contest so he can retrieve a demon named Black that Calypso took from him, he's still Satan. So I'd say that counts for a lot. So why is Sweet Tooth chaotic evil? Well, because he's Sweet Tooth. He's not quite as insanely homicidal in this game as he was in later entries, at least outside of the Lost ending, but he's also just as insane and as chaotic as he's ever been. No amount of rescuing Crazy Harold is gonna change that. Alright, now on to Twisted Metal 2, which should be easier considering that this was when they started to strike out and really decide what they wanted to do with the series. So, Outlaw 2, aka Jamie Roberts, wants to rescue her brother who was unjustly screwed at the end of the previous contest, so she's a good cop and her intentions of rescuing her brother are good intentions, so she's once again about as lawful good as you can get. Shadow, aka Mortimer, wants to take Calypso down and wants to do it by sicking the souls of all the people who have died as a result of the contest on Calypso. He didn't necessarily want to take action personally, but he was more than willing to let the people most deserving of revenge get their revenge. So that says to me that he's good and is neither lawful or unlawful. Minion is a case where you could easily say he's evil, but I prefer to say that he's chaotic good in this case, if only because, for one, he had his powers stolen from him, so he deserves his pound of flesh, and two, he wants to take out Calypso and send him to hell. And Calypso more than deserves it. But while his desired actions are ultimately good, his intentions aren't. Plus, he's an actual demon from hell, so he's situationally good, but his intentions make him chaotic good. Spectre, aka Ken Masters, is entirely self-motivated, which is not a bad thing, and his wish for worldwide fame is also something that doesn't necessarily have any sort of bad intentions. He's a goon and a bit selfish, but neither good nor evil, and based on his wish and his personality, he's basically a law-abiding citizen in spite of himself. And even his wish doesn't seem all that unlawful, despite the clear self-motivation, so to me, Spectre is lawful neutral. Warthog, aka Captain Roberts' wish and motivation is purely self-motivated and doesn't affect anybody but himself as he wants to be young again. He has a single line of thought that carries him all the way through and his internal strife means absolutely nothing to anybody but himself, to the point that he can be nothing more than a true neutral. Roadkill, Marcus Kane, the Homeless Vagabond. 
dude is kind of insane, and his tendency to break the fourth wall only proves that. But he's neither good nor evil, more self-motivated and wanting to wake up from what he feels is nothing more than a dream. So his insanity and his questionable intentions to me makes him undeniably chaotic, and with no real moral direction, that makes him chaotic neutral. This time, Bruce, the driver of Thumper, wants to rule the world. He wants to be king of all he surveys, establish his own law, establish his own rule, and lead with an iron fist. I mean, you have to be pretty insane to want world domination, and while that's not necessarily the phrasing he would use, it's basically the same thing. But he doesn't necessarily want to kill anyone or harm anyone, just rule over them, so that's a lawful mindset to me. But to crave totalitarian leadership is also pretty evil. Combine the two and what do you get? While Sweet Tooth's wish in Twisted Metal 2 is not particularly evil as much as it is insane, for one, it's Sweet Tooth. For two, just look at that character description. If that doesn't scream crazy evil clown, I don't know what does. So he's still the same crazy evil clown, and as a matter of fact, he's done nothing but get more crazy. But there is one person who's even crazier and even more evil. Mr. Grimm in Twisted Metal 2 is possibly the most evil he's ever been, definitely more so than the first game. He's portrayed as a soul junkie and is willing to cause a full-scale apocalypse just to satiate his cravings, no matter what the cost. There's no doubt that's evil, and his willingness to cause widespread destruction in pursuit of his cravings makes him truly the embodiment of chaotic evil in this game. Oh god, Twisted Metal 3. You see, the problem with this game, among its many other problems, is that there really isn't much to the characters. They get a short splash page of information and a 10 second ending cutscene, and since every character gets screwed over by Calypso in some way, I don't think there's any character that is out and out evil based on what they want. So get ready for some reaching. As a bit of a departure from their previous iterations, Outlaw 3, consisting of both Carl and Jamie Roberts, want to stop crime altogether, which inadvertently creates a utopia that they don't fit in anymore. That is pure lawful good energy. Granny Dread, the driver of Hammerhead, is an old woman whose neighborhood keeps getting destroyed while she's trying to watch her daytime TV. Now she wants to enter the contest to deal with everyone and therefore finally be able to have some peace and quiet to watch her daytime TV. I'd say that's a pretty understandable motive, especially if you've ever had noisy neighbors. Flower Power, aka Amber, is an environmentalist who wants to restore nature, however, at the expense of humans, so her intentions are good, but she arguably wants to go too far with it and destroy civilization itself in favor of nature. So good intentions, chaotic energy. I mean, at this point, Warthog's Captain Rogers is just going through all the proper channels to get what he wants after getting screwed over in the previous contest. At this point, he just wants what's owed to him, which gives him some pretty lawful energy. Because what's more lawful than wanting what is rightfully owed to you? Putting him over the edge in that category more so than last time, but he's still somewhat self-motivated, which makes him stay in the neutral zone. Club Kid is a stereotypical raver who wants to party until he passes out. Not a complex character, this one. And because his intentions affect nobody but himself, and he has no positive or negative attributes, that puts Club Kid in the neutral category for me. Roadkill, aka Marcus Kane, in this case, doesn't really qualify as good or evil, mostly because he qualifies as friggin' nuts. Even more so than last time, because now he's not even breaking the fourth wall. He believes in aliens, though why wouldn't he, there's a literally a level for that, and wants to quietly rot away in nature. He's neither good nor evil, but he's insane as a shithouse rat, so once again he's chaotic neutral. <laughs> 
Minion is the same demon he was in previous games, still came from hell, and is still ostensibly just as evil as he always was. The only difference this time is that he doesn't want to cause any harm to anybody and wants to return back to hell. You know, that's pretty lawful behavior for a demon. But considering his pedigree, I'd still say he's very evil. Next. I mean, it's Sweet Tooth. What more need be said at this point? I'm slotting Mr. Grimm into Chaotic Evil for one reason, and it's for the fact that his story continues on from his story in Twisted Metal 2 where he basically caused an apocalypse to satiate his cravings for consuming souls. Yes, I like the word satiate. F*** off. So long story short, he caused widespread destruction and violence for his own gain, and so being Chaotic Evil does not change in that case just because he's turned on Calypso now and wants his soul. Now moving on to Twisted Metal 4, and this game does do some of the work for me by labeling the characters as good, evil, or twisted. But I'll give my own opinions, as I think this game got it wrong in some cases. Quattro is the definition of lawful good in Twisted Metal 4. He's essentially a less vile version of Robocop, in theory, because Quattro is not a cop cyborg, but is an intergalactic robot bounty hunter who specifically has shown up to arrest Sweet Tooth and his minions. Arresting Sweet Tooth is absolutely the morally righteous thing to do, and, I mean, he is literally arresting people, so that's about as lawful as you can get. I will admit that trying to find non-paid parking these days is a pain in the ass, but meter mating is a necessary evil to prevent people from abusing free parking. So to me, that makes meter made 989's attempt to make plasticine look sexy, neutral good. Aside from the fact that she's just doing her job, she specifically enters the contest so she can meet face to face with Sweet Tooth and present him and his gang with all their finds. That's pretty awesome. Okay, so the environment needs bugs. That's not up for debate. But these days, it's still pretty warm into October, and towards the end of the season, I can't even sit in my car with my windows down without wasps harassing me. It's like a metaphor for YouTube comments after I discuss a controversial topic. So Goggle Eyes wanting to kill all the bugs in the world isn't a good thing, but he does have good intentions considering his backstory included him being traumatized by a giant cockroach. Doing a bad thing doesn't always necessarily make you evil. Perhaps just misguided. And I don't even think his classification should be evil, it should be twisted. So all these factors combined spells out to me that he is chaotic good. Orbital is a secret agent who lost half his face to a biological weapon, so now he just wants to be normal. So in this instance, he's not good, he's not evil, he's purely self-motivated, but not in a selfish way. His motives make total sense, and since he's also a secret agent, that makes him more inherently lawful than many other characters. So lawful neutral makes sense to me. Mr. Zombie, aka Rob Zombie, almost exists as a paradox in the series as he's a fictionalized version of a real person, but either way, it's probably due to that fact that they didn't want to give him any real positive or negative traits for fear of offending the big man himself. And so as a result, Mr. Zombie doesn't really have any personality, and his wish for the world to hear the wails and war cries of a dead man's soul doesn't really mean anything in-universe, nor does it affect anything in-universe, so basically Rob Zombie is a character that doesn't really mean anything Thing in the universe, making him a true neutral. The Joneses aren't necessarily bad people, they're just a dysfunctional white trash family who for some reason take it upon themselves to enter a deathmatch to get a new RV. The dynamic of the family and how they treat each other as well as Sweet Tooth is pretty crazy, so I think I'll slot them in as chaotic neutral. I mean, you kind of have to be crazy to want Sweet Tooth as a driver and then knowingly piss him off. Okay, so hear me out. Calypso is actually playable in this game, and that's why he's eligible for the list in this case. 
Calypso in most of his iterations is undisputedly a complete and total monster, and while he definitely is still evil here, I would classify him as lawful in this case because despite everything he's done, it is rightfully his contest that was stolen from him. So even though he's evil, he's not really doing anything wrong in this case, and that's why I consider him a lawful evil. Because he's definitely still evil. I mean, he's Calypso. What more need be said? Originally, I was gonna have Pizza Boy as neutral good, but that was up until I read his backstory. Extorting customers, driving away the competition, firing machine guns at a customer's birdbath for not tipping enough. This guy is insane! It's a wonder why the game labels him as good, and clearly he wants the best car in the world in order to continue to rule over the pizza delivery business in his city with an iron fist. He is evil, I don't know how anybody missed this. Okay, so this is a bit of a cheat because he doesn't have a story or an ending, but Sweet Tooth is playable, and I never said anything about a character needing an ending to place on this list. You'll see that in a minute, but Sweet Tooth, aside from being his usual insane murderous self, has now taken it upon himself to steal the contest from Calypso, and is now the man distorting wishes and destroying lives. Usually, he's pretty much the embodiment of evil already, but now he is all that, but with the power to back it up as well. Now moving on to Twisted Metal Black and Lost, the best game in the series and its weird semi-sequel. I'm lumping these two together because whatever context exists in Lost is at best supplementary to Black because of a lack of story cutscenes. Plus, I'm still not entirely convinced that David Jaffe wasn't just making shit up as he went along. Outlaw is possibly the most morally righteous character in the entire series, a SWAT team member who hunted down and opened fire on a cabal of terrorists. So he may have the capacity to kill, plus he's willing to do the right thing to save people, but he also has enough morality within him to be genuinely traumatized when he opens fire on the wrong person. And as a SWAT team member, that puts him over the edge as a true, lawful good. The phrase of the day is, an eye for an eye is f***ing awesome. Before her best friend was murdered, the driver of Shadow, Raven, didn't really have a bad bone in her body. She was just an average goth teenager. It's only afterward that she had the capacity to do anyone harm. And her desire to see the boys who killed her best friend be brought to justice is justified. And based on the character description of Lost, thereafter she becomes sort of an avenging angel, going after those who deserve it the most. Vigilantism isn't legal, but there's a debate to be made about punishing those who deserve to be punished. She may be capable of murder, but she doesn't murder anyone undeserving. So I think she's morally good, but not lawfully good. Okay, so this one's an interesting case. No-Face, the driver of Crazy 8, was a normal guy with a family, and all he did was get his ass kicked in a boxing match and go to the wrong doctor afterwards. And he's definitely capable of hurting people, but more than anything, he's just a guy who was caught in a bad situation. So anything he does is not really his fault. He's a force of chaos, but ultimately was a normal person with a good heart until he got screwed over. Only after that, did he start murdering people. So definitely a chaotic good. And really, he just wants revenge on that one doctor. Everyone else just kind of got in his way. So definitely chaotic good. The driver of Roadkill, John Doe, is morally neutral mostly for the fact that he doesn't even know who he is for most of the game. But he does eventually find out that he's a double agent who infiltrated an apocalypse cult. And for that reason, he's definitely lawful, but because of his amnesia, the character that we knew him as was neutral. Neither good nor evil. And he's even more neutral as soon as it's retconned in Lost that he's one of a series of clones, but once again, I'm pretty sure they were just making stuff up at that point. If you've played Twisted Metal Black, you know that Minion doesn't have any cutscenes, and his story amounts to a word jumble about alternate personalities. But because he's such a non-entity in the story proper, and his entire purpose within the overall world is a meta-deconstruction about the main character of the game, that makes him a true neutral in my eyes.
Manslaughter, Black, the mysterious entity. A being crafted with no other purpose than taking out Calypso. That makes him chaotic neutral to me because he has no ulterior motive and no overall thought other than his goal. So he doesn't have the capacity to be good or evil as he's a pure force of nature and that says to me that he classifies as a chaotic neutral. I agonized a bit over who to put as a lawful evil in this game because nobody really fit the bill perfectly. Eventually I settled on Mr. Grimm, a Vietnam vet who was drafted at the age of 18 along with his friend Benny. They both fought valiantly until they were both captured and Benny was gravely wounded after which Mr. Grimm was forced to dine on his best friend which sent him on a downward spiral to which he's developed a taste for human flesh. And that's where potentially lawful neutral becomes a lawful evil, because wanting revenge on the guy who forced you to eat your own friend, that's one thing. Actively going out of your way to dine on human flesh, that's messed up. But with that said, he was perfectly on the level and even fought for his country until he became a victim of circumstance, which makes him a lawful evil. It's not perfect, but it's the best I got. Now for once, Sweet Tooth is not chaotic evil, but rather neutral evil. Main reason for that being that despite killing indiscriminately and enjoying every minute of it, he did consider, if only briefly, the idea of giving up his murderous ways in order to stop the curse that he's been suffering from, the eternal punishment of the Flaming Head. The lesser known Jim Carrey movie. But he is still undisputedly evil in every way. His story brings that across with no ambiguity. However, there is still one person more evil than him. If I were to give the distinction of chaotic evil to anyone, it would be the driver of Warthog, Cage. And why is that? Because while Sweet Tooth briefly considers giving it all up, Cage has no such reservations. In fact, his entire story centers around him wanting to remove the part of him that will prevent him from becoming the greatest murderer of all time. And that says to me that he might just be the most evil character to exist in the entire series because he exists with no other purpose than to murder indiscriminately. Oh dear lord, Small Brawl was another one I had a lot of trouble with. The cast in this game consists entirely of kids, and so in a lot of cases they came across as mischievous, and none of them came across as outright evil. But at least we have a decent selection towards the beginning of the list. I mean, even if Little Outlaw is still playing pretend cop, it still means that by virtue of these various characters' personalities that he is inherently lawful. Plus, he's attempting to take Billy Calypso down. With rather extreme prejudice, to be fair, this kid uses more extreme force than the actual cops in the series, but he still means well and is a pretend cop, so lawful good it is. Slam is another character that manages to get one over on Calypso in a rather unorthodox way, but it's no less deserving and satisfying. He buries him up to his neck and puts a porta potty on top of him, and that's all she wrote. It's more street justice than lawful justice, but it's still justice nonetheless. So I think that he's a neutral good at the very least. Crimson Fury, driven by the kidified version of Agent Stone, is a kid playing pretend secret agent, but he is fully justified in bringing Calypso some level of justice, seeing as Billy Calypso is the neighborhood bully, but the justice he brings does involve spraying a cat with water, and I can't condone that. So I would put him in the chaotic end for that reason alone. I'd say that Warthog, despite having an extremely similar personality, story, and ending to Outlaw, can only be described as more neutral than Outlaw, if only because this kid is a complete and total idiot. Outlaw accidentally blows up the cop car because he misfired. This kid doesn't even check to see if that's actually Calypso before opening fire. So for sheer ineptitude causing grievous collateral damage, this kid gets downgraded from good to neutral. Not evil though, he still has the best intentions. Spectre in this game is sort of a blank slate by design because he's supposed to be characterized as a ghost, but he does nothing, doesn't have a personality, and his ending isn't even about him, it's about his father. He's a nothing character, and so true neutral it is.
Mr. Grimm, or rather just Grimm in this game, is a kid horribly obsessed with Halloween. While this kid isn't doing anyone any harm with his fascination, the extent of his fascination with Halloween clearly means he has psychological issues to spare, and that's what puts him here for me. The more I thought about Thumper in this game, the more I thought they were a good choice for Lawful Evil, because in my opinion, aside from being someone in a position of authority, Lawful Evil can also describe somebody who's knowingly causing harm but without breaking any laws. The drivers of Thumper, Vinny and Bruce, are a couple of bass heads who want the biggest, baddest sound system known to man. And I don't know if you've ever sat in relative silence only for somebody to drive by blasting their music, but it's really annoying, and while they're not breaking any laws necessarily, I think the type of people who do that on purpose are royal douchebags. But these guys, especially with their wish to have the biggest, baddest sound system known to man, so powerful it blows them out of city limits and permanently deafens them, certainly fits that bill, so I classify them as lawful evil. Okay, so this is one of those cases where I'm reading between the lines to find my answer. Some might say that the driver of Shadow, Mortimer, was the victim here. And in theory he was. That is until he implies that he exposed his pet frog to radiation. Technically, such exuberance is common following radiation. And while that makes for a funny gag, this kid just admitted that he's running science experiments on living animals. That's kind of messed up. So yeah, Mortimer may be a victim, but he's also pretty evil in his own right. Let me put it this way. Sweet Tooth steals an ice cream truck and ties Calypso to the truck during a joyride. And they're even being chased by police. That is awesome, but also has some pretty insanely messed up implications. So he's the best and only choice to be chaotic evil for this game. And now on to the de facto third game in the overall series, Twisted Metal Head On, with more characters, more levels, and more modes than ever. Crimson Fury in this game, Agent Shepard, is an FBI agent whose sole motivation is to win the contest so he can arrest Calypso. He resists all attempts at temptation by Calypso and does actually successfully arrest him. It goes off surprisingly without a hitch, so for being completely on the level and resisting all attempts to persuade him, Agent Shepard is definitely lawful good. Axel in Twisted Metal Head On does have good intentions. He promised the scientist that gave him his robotic arms that he would get the wish if Axel won, but Axel has a good heart and couldn't turn down the prospect of wishing for world peace. Unfortunately, it's the scientist who screws him over in this case. He tried to use his wish for good, and that's good enough. The driver of Warthog, Colonel Hall, wants to put an end to the drug trade to save the kids. Which is a noble pursuit, however, instead of simply wishing the drug trade disappeared, he decides to take matters into his own hands and deliver justice one bullet at a time. He has theoretically good intentions, and it's a worthy cause, but he also went out of his way to put himself into a position where he's murdering people, if justifiably. Your take on this character will depend on what you think of vigilantism, but I think he has good intentions, very questionable execution. And that's what makes him chaotic. Oh my god. This is the only instance in all of Outlaw's appearances where the driver is not considered lawful good, but instead I downgraded them to lawful neutral because they had the chance to do something good, but they didn't communicate, argued amongst each other, accidentally wished for the wrong thing, and ultimately did nothing of value. They may have had good intentions, but I've said this before, sometimes you're judged based on your actions and not your intentions. This time, the driver of Shadow, Mortimer, instead of being an undead keeper of souls, is just a reanimated corpse who wants to go back to sleep. And so he does. It's about as neutral a motivation or personality that you can have. A living corpse who wants to be a non-living corpse. The end.
So throughout the evolution of Mr. Grimm, the question has always been which twist are they going to give the whole Grim Reaper thing this time? And this is the least evil he's been in the main series continuity. I said main continuity. He wants to no longer be the Grim Reaper, but his desire to be done with the whole Grim Reaping thing does forcefully put somebody else in that position, but he doesn't care. All that matters is he's quitting his job so he doesn't have to bother anymore. It's a very self-motivated goal that could potentially throw the entire balance of the world out of whack, depending on who the new Grim Reaper is. I mean, one of the non-canon endings involves Mr. Grim starting an apocalypse, but he doesn't care what the repercussions are. Imagine if someone like that ends up with the power of the Grim Reaper. So that puts him as chaotic neutral, in my opinion. I don't believe he's evil because he doesn't necessarily have bad intentions, but his actions could potentially have drastic consequences that he doesn't care about. There's an entire essay's worth of stuff to talk about when it comes to the overall story of Sweet Tooth in Twisted Metal head-on, and I'm sure I'll probably get to that at some point. But for now, I consider him lawfully evil in this case, because while he's still the same insane murderous bastard we've come to know, this time he's completely benign. Merely wanting to take over the contest, and in fact, willingly goes through the process of winning the contest before wishing to switch bodies with Calypso. For a guy who has, in an alternate universe, staged a full-on coup against Calypso, this is comparatively lawful. Following the rules of the contest to get what he wants. But at the end of the day, he's still Sweet Tooth, so he's still evil. A change from the usual in this case, where Hammerhead is actually evil in this game. Hammerhead, aka Catfish, is a hunter who wants to hunt the deadliest game, humans. And anybody who enjoys hunting this much and actively has no remorse in hunting and murdering fellow humans is definitely evil. And while he's definitely evil for the sake of being evil, like other examples in the past, he's too calculated to be truly chaotic. There's a method to his madness, despite it being madness, but he's definitely still evil, so neutral evil it is. Cousin Eddie is kind of a force of nature when it comes to the series. Not an official entrant to the contest, he mostly goes along with it just for the fun of killing people, and all he wants in the end is a better RV for killing people. He's a bit of a simple-minded hayseed who has very few goals in life other than killing. Honestly, without any real remorse or apprehension, which makes him, to me, the true chaotic evil. Well, would you look at that. Once again, Twisted Metal 2012 is a monkey wrench in the whole ordeal because you only get three playable characters with actual stories. So I suppose I have to inject the non-playable side characters in these stories into the morality question and break my one rule that these characters have to be playable. No matter. Grim Sr., Mr. Grimm's dad, is a law-abiding citizen, a loving father, and a stuntman who tragically meets his end during a stunt gone wrong. There aren't a lot of characters in this game, and even fewer playable ones, but Grimm Sr., as I've come to call him, is about as good as it gets. Preacher is a character that only shows up a few times in story mode. He doesn't compete or anything, all he does is unsuccessfully go after Calypso. He tried, and sometimes that's all you can do. So for having a good heart and trying to stop evil, Preacher earns the distinction of neutral good. Mr. Grimm is the most morally righteous of the three main protagonists. He's a man who watched his dad, a stuntman, die in a botched stunt, and now he wants a second chance to save his dad, but he's also not above doing some pretty heinous things to get from A to B. And as a matter of fact, he's even done some pretty heinous things before the game has started. So with that said, I do think he's more or less good-hearted and has good intentions, but he's also a force of chaos because it doesn't matter what gets between him and his goal. Sophie Kane's entire role in the story is self-preservation because she's hunted down relentlessly by her crazy dad. She doesn't display any particularly good or evil qualities, but she also doesn't do anything explicitly for any other reason than self-defense, so that screams lawful neutral to me.
Charlie Kane shows up at the end and has something like 30 seconds of screen time, and all he does is pledge his desire to take revenge for his father Marcus, aka Sweet Tooth, who was tricked and killed by Calypso. But he gets so little screen time that he doesn't show any sort of moral alignment one way or the other, so that makes him a true neutral in my eyes. Um, uh, uh, Dr. Ospolak. Yeah, that'll do. He's the doctor who Dollface goes to when she has a giant disfiguring scar on her face. And yes, I know Ospolak is Calypso spelled backwards, so he's definitely just Calypso in disguise, but I don't know, he's a doctor who does his job, even if that job is kind of messed up. What can I say? That was the best I could do. The main reason I think Calypso is lawful evil is that, well, he's the one writing the laws. He is the one who has control over this entire domain. He is lawful in the same way a dictator is lawful, ruling over his land with an iron fist. Hence the evil distinction as well, because he's in charge and he's distinctly evil and diabolical in every way, willingly and knowingly screwing people over for his own sick amusement. Also, if you weren't convinced already, he is a collector of souls. Dollface, portrayed by Krista Sparks, no relation to Calypso's daughter, is one of those characters who really does deserve everything coming to them. She's a supermodel who's been noted as going as far as straight up killing other supermodels to keep her own profile as high as possible. Really, her getting into a car accident and eventually ending up in the mask only removed whatever vestiges of sanity remained. She was always crazy and evil. But of course, this list ends as it began, with Sweet Tooth as chaotic evil. This once benign ice cream driver was driven over the edge by his dark alter ego, and since that moment, he's been on a non-stop killing spree where nobody is safe. And the only thing that drives him now is his desire to get the one that got away, his daughter that escaped his wrath. There's nothing in there but a black heart, and the desire to murder, and that's why he is, for the final time, definitely chaotic evil. And that was the moral alignment for every Twisted Metal game. To be honest, I probably could have done every character, but then that would have made this a glorified list video, and I want my list videos to be special. Maybe sometime down the road. It is funny how the different tones and presentations of each game made some of these games so much more complicated to classify each entry. And it is funny how despite the tone and presentation changing, certain characters never really left their bubble. Especially Sweet Tooth, he was always evil. By my definition, anyway. Granted, sometimes he was evil by default and not because of what he did in the game. Also, the cop characters almost universally had a monopoly on lawful good. Which I think also makes sense, it's an easy archetype. Well anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode of delving into the morality of the Twisted Metal series. Let me know what you think. Did I get any wrong? Did I miss any important context that would have changed my opinion? Let me hear it. And if you like what I do here, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification icon so you're always up to date on what I'm doing. And if you want to support the channel in a more direct fashion, you can pledge to my Patreon for unique perks and rewards such as early access, Discord benefits, and exclusive content along with these fine folks right here. And an extra special thank you to Billy Not Brooklyn, Dick Kickham, Ga004, My Name is Tank, Monsieur Tenadier, Knob Varley, Patchworks, Raff, Ty Trovi, and Weird Webster for going above and beyond. Elsewise than that, I've been the King of Snark Style right here on Tactical Bacon Productions, and I will see you next time. Stay crispy, my friends.